myself and instructors all over the state just like me and my team to use measures in order to offer PE in this format, this virtual but it's also oh, okay. live format. So we will uh, be tracking attendance. The Division of Real Estate wants you in attendance for at least 90% of every class you attend for teacher's credit. In a 60 minute class, they would like you to be here for 54 minutes. Um, it is okay to miss, of course, a little bit of class, which is why you're able to miss as, uh, one of the three polls we'll be issuing throughout the class. You can also miss one of the five code words we'll be giving. Now the polls will appear on screen. They are interactive, so you'll respond to the polls in real time. The code words, on the other hand, some of them will be on screen, but some of them will only be said aloud. So you'll want to both watch and listen for those because not watching, you might miss the code word that appeared on screen if you're not listening, you might miss the code word that was said aloud. So again, these measures are put in place by the Division of Real Estate. Ultimately, they just want you and I to be taking this class like we would if we were in the same room together. Um, code words will not be collected until the end of the class, so please just write these down, hold on to them, and at the end of the class. Okay. Oh, Let's I'm get started on oh today's oh, topic with our friends, the yeah. Amaze. And one more time yeah. for you new agents out there, this is yeah. for Kendall Heritage Market yeah. is a Analysis. This is, is a process that's going to help you to suggest a price to a client. Um, fortunately for us, a CMA is simpler and easier than an appraisal because, of course, a price is a little bit more... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, fluid, for instance, you might have a client who um, needs to sell yesterday because they are being transferred across the country and they really need to sell this house as soon as possible. That client's going to price a little bit low in order to entice the buyers uh, to move on the property. Whereas in a situation where um, a client doesn't care how long the property sits on the market. They don't mind if it sits and sits and sits so long as they don't lose a dime. Uh, that property is going to be priced a little bit high. So there is um, some range with price, of course, and we're going to use the data the MLS collects, specifically listing data, in order to learn more about the market that we are pricing in how that market has recently been performing and of course how properties like the one we're pricing are performing in that market so we're going to rely on the data the mls has in order to do that so that's where my little suggestions here come in they are quite broad that's purposeful um no two cmas will be the same no two properties are the same and so Today, you might have to price a condo and you'll be able to find quite a few properties that are probably very similar, very close by, and maybe even very recently transacted, seeing as how uh, condos tend to turn over a little faster than other types of residential real estate, typically speaking. But next week, you might be approached by a client who needs you to price a horse property in South Jordan that is completely surrounded by new construction and you're going to have to get a little more flexible with what you consider to be similar nearby in the recent history. So every CMA is going to be a little different. That's why my suggestions are so broad. But ultimately, finding properties like the one you're pricing nearby and recently transacted, that's the kind of information that is going to help you make an educated guess about how the property you're pricing might perform when you list or what might be a good competitive offer price. No matter uh, who it is you're helping and what side of the transaction they're on, finding properties like the one you're pricing, near the one you're pricing, and recently transacted are going to, that's what's going to help you to uh, uh, estimate that price. Let me give you your first code word, it is window. I am looking out the window at the street below. First code word is window. Remember, write these down. We won't collect them until the end. Now, we are going to choose a property in Sandy as uh, the mock subject 
property. When I say subject, I'm referring to the property you're pricing. That's a pretty typical term in CMAs. So is the term comps uh, or comparables. Usually that's used as uh, a descriptor for the properties you have searched for and found that are similar to the property you're pricing. What's the three now, even though we're going to be focusing in Sandy, you will still be able to use some or all of the MLS tools I'll be demonstrating today to do your own CMAs. So uh, while location matters for, um, for an actual CMA and for finding properties like the one you're pricing, even though I'm showing you a demonstration in one location, the MLS tools are going to apply no matter where you, you're tuning in from and no matter where your next um, CMA is. So this is a single family bi-level home in Sandy. It's at 10,057 Marble Street. It has four bedrooms and two bathrooms, one of which is a full bath, the other is a three-fourth bath. Uh, it has not quite 1,800 square feet, but it comes really close. It was built in the early 70s. It sits on 0.2 acres. It has a one-car garage, a full basement that is all the way or mostly finished. These are the kinds of details you're going to look for in similar properties. Now, ideally, we would find um, a handful of single family bi level homes with four beds and uh, one full bath, and one three fourth bath, and just about 1,800 square feet. And they would have all been built in 72 and they'll sit on point two acre lots. Ideally, we would find properties identical to our subject uh, immediately next door or immediately nearby and they all would have sold yesterday. That would be the ideal scenario. You're not going to find even a single property that quite so perfectly measures up. Uh, how close can you get? That's really the question you will want to ask yourself. How close can you get to that perfect match? Knowing you're not quite going to reach it. How close can you get to the ideal um, uh, scenario, knowing you're going to have to walk some of those expectations back? So now let's move over to the MLS system. We're looking now at the dashboard. It has seen a few updates in the past couple of months, but uh, we should all be pretty familiar with this page at this point. Now you can begin your CMA with the CMA search page because we're going to start by searching for MLS data uh, that's going to help us to price the property. It's going to help us build a picture um, or a story of how properties like the one we're pricing are performing and have been performing. So we can search the MLS with the CMA search page by going to CMA Create New, but you could also use any of our residential search pages. Um, full, quick, drive time, and cross property search, these might be the most helpful if you're not going to use the CMA search page, but if you do use the CMA search page, the search fields available here have been handpicked for the CMA process. So it's just a slightly more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of the word, darn it, but it's a little bit more catered to the CMA process. Now you can start to search for properties like the one you're pricing with these search fields, for instance, maybe city or zip code or the use of the map. You can start to enter some statuses, uh, how far back into the history of the MLS do you want to go, and so on. Or you can start with an option called Populate. Now before I give you a description of how Populate form works, why don't we have our first poll? I don't want to fall behind in these. And I do have a tendency to do that if I'm not careful. Do you have a tendency to wake up early or stay up late? You're, obviously your individual unique answers are, are not going to determine your CE credit. We're just looking for your engagement. Are you with us? You haven't fallen asleep or taken a 20 minute phone call or something like that. Now, even after you've answered, the poll will stay open until I close it for everybody. I typically do this after about one minute. 
maybe a little less. Okay, everyone, thanks for your responses. It looks like the night owls won in this group. That's that's um, pretty typical, although I have occasionally seen groups of early birds uh, be the largest in, in classes. Okay, so this populate option allows me to tell the MLS, take what you know about the property I'm pricing and find me properties like it. So it's the ability to create a basic search, just a starting point, based on a property the MLS uh, has facts about. Now, when a property has been listed in the MLS before, we can actually use that most recent MLS number assigned to the property you're pricing to start a basic search for properties like it. Now, of course, we would only use this option if this most recent MLS number is still representative of the property today. If it isn't, it's not worth using populate form. If it is still representative, it's going to save you a little bit of time. Watch what happens when I hit go. I went from a million plus records down to 1400. Now, I still have searching to do. I'm not going to want to dig through 1400 results to try to find a handful of uh, decent matches for my subject, but it did get me started. Now, what it did was give me some basic search criteria for properties uh, similar in some of their specs to the property I said was the subject when I used populate. So when I went to populate form, I entered the last MLS number assigned to 10,057 Marble Street, and it created a basic search for us. Now to find the most recent MLS number assigned to a property, I recommend using the tax data search. This is a basic search page that's going to allow you to search not only for tax records, but once you get your results, you can also see the MLS numbers that have been assigned to that particular property over the 25 years and counting the MLS has been uh, active online. So in order not to lose our current CMA work, I'm going to use new tab. That's the ability to do more than one thing in the MLS at the same time. And I'm now opening the tax data search. All I need is really basic information like the county the property is located in and the name of the owner or the name of the street or the house number. My results will be returned below and I can click on the parcel number of the property I'm pricing. This takes me to the tax records the MLS has been able to collect. And in the upper right-hand corner is every MLS number that has ever been assigned to the property you searched, in this case, 10,057 Marble Street. So this is a complete history of every time that property has appeared in the MLS. Now, sometimes you will see a lot of numbers like we see today, Sometimes there will be very few. There might not even be an MLS number dropdown when you search for a particular property, and that would just be because the property has never been listed in the MLS before. It could be because it's a brand new property. It could be because uh, the same person has owned it for 28 years. It could be because the only time it was transacted, it was a FISBO or it you know, exchanged hands within a family or something like that. So when you see no MLS number drop down, the property has simply never been listed before uh, in the past. When you do see a drop down and there's more than one number, the top number is going to be the most recent. So this is in descending order. So the top number is the most recent. I click on that MLS number and it opens that listing in the agent full report. Now I can make sure this listing accurately represents the property as it is today. And if it does, I can use populate. Now in using populate, some of the search criteria it gave me was the same zip code as the subject property, 84094, the same property type and style, single family split entry or by level, it uh, is now helping me search for properties that are no older than five years older and no newer than five years newer. We're looking for properties that have a square footage 
within 15% in either direction. So that 1,800 or so square feet that our subject property has, the system calculates 15% uh, of that 1800 number and it removes that amount from one side and it adds that amount on the other. And that's what's given us this range. Now I'm still returning 1400 matches, so I still have searching to do. I can certainly trim up uh, some of this search criteria. For instance, beds and baths, these are really big ranges in my opinion. I would prefer to consider properties that have no less than one fewer bedroom and no more than one additional bedroom than the property I'm pricing, if I can help it. So I've trimmed down bedrooms. I'm also going to trim the range of bathrooms from zero to four down to one to three. So that would be just properties that have uh, no fewer than one fewer bathroom and no more than one additional bathroom. Again, then my subject. Um, Okay, that didn't shave off many matches, so we're still in a pretty good spot here. I think I will choose some statuses to work with. Sold status is really valuable in the CMA process. When a listing is marked as sold, we learn a lot about the transaction. The most we're going to learn, unless we personally call the listing agent or buyer's agent that represented the transaction, um, we learn what it sold for. We learn if there were concessions, we learn the terms of the sale, how long did it take to sell. We really learn a lot about that property and how it performs in the market when the property has been marked as sold. Some agents really like to include other statuses when they search for properties to compare to their subject. Um, so I might include multiple statuses if you do, these statuses will be separated for you on the next step. The next step is the CMA report. It's where we can compare our search results to the subject property itself. And if we end up with search results that are um, in different statuses, the system will separate those. So I could at that point throw more weight behind sold status than I do active status comparables, for instance. Um, if you're the kind of agent that swears by only using sold status and nothing else, that's completely fine. I'd like to show an example, if I can, of using multiple statuses. The one mistake I'd like agents to avoid making is thinking they have to do multiple CMAs on the same property in order to uh, consider active status comparables separately from sold status comparables. Uh, you don't have to do that. These statuses will be separated for you. Now, I'm currently searching a year's worth of information. That's the default time frame when you choose a permanent status like sold or expired or canceled. You get one year's worth of information. Now, sometimes this is not enough information. You might be wanting to build um, some, some understanding of how the market has changed over the years, or uh, maybe you want to look for everything that's sold in a particular neighborhood between 2017 and, and, and today. Um, for a CMA, a year is a, actually quite a long time. Remember, we're essentially trying to predict how a property might perform in today's market. The more recent the information, the better. Now, ideally, we would find extremely recent information, uh, so recent that we might not have to go any further than you know, 30 or 60 or even 90 days into the past. But remember, I'm only bringing in six matches at this point, and I'm still searching an entire zip code as my location. I would like to get more specific with location than this, so I may start a little bit more broad in my time frame, maybe six months or so. Uh, I've entered 180 days because I want to get more specific with location and I'm going to do that with the map. The map is the single best way to get specific with your location search. Everything else is restricted to zip code or city or, or uh, county, but 
the map is going to allow me to draw any area I would like to search in. Now it does remember the MLS number I said was my subject property and it's going to allow me to jump straight there. That just saves me a little bit of time. Even if you didn't use populate form because you can't use populate form, maybe the property's never been listed in the MLS before or the last time it was listed was 25 years ago and it's changed a lot since then. Or the last time it was listed was yesterday, but the listing agent made a typo uh, or something like that. Then, or maybe you don't like to use populate form. You can still use this jump to option. You can still jump straight to your subject property. You can simply enter the address of the subject property or the um, tax ID of the subject property. Now I need to take one of our draw tools or even a few of our draw tools to draw a location to search in. You have the radius and the rectangle. These are both pretty straightforward. You will just literally be laying those shapes on the map. Now you can make them as large or as small as you need to do. You can place them wherever you need, but you'll end up with a, uh, a rectangle or a circle. These other two tools let you draw any area you might want including the ability to get so specific that you can include one side of a street and not the other. Now the pencil tool tends to be a little bit easier if you are using a touch screen and the point click polygon tool tends to be a little easier to use if you're using a mouse. This brings me to our second poll. I'm curious if you have a preferred draw tool. What's your preferred draw tool, Chris? Oh, thank you. <laughs> you guys ever done the pencil? Yeah, I use that you, all the time. Serious? You do? Oh. Like in every single CMA you do? No. Oh. If people are telling me like they want to buy a house somewhere, uh -huh. west of the freeway or west of the freeway, including Rose Park, so is, that's your search So far the radius tool, tool is the clear CMA. favorite, but we okay. also have some who really right. like the rectangle tool, some others that really like the point click polygon tool, uh, and at least one person that likes the pencil tool. There's no right or wrong answers yeah, here. Like all of the polls, your own preference is up to you. Now, a one mile radius is really common in a CMA. I actually went ahead and got a little more specific than a one mile radius by using the point click polygon tool. And I isolated the area that is within the major streets in this location, as well as uh, on the same side of this huge landmark here, the big gully that runs through Sandy. This is my subject property, the little blue flag here. So I decided to bring in listings just from the, the uh, north of the gully rather than listings from the south. So in this case, I chose not to use a one mile radius, but a one mile radius is quite common in doing your own CMAs. And the area you choose to search in is ultimately up to you. That's true of all your search criteria. What you search for um, and the properties you end up selecting as comparable properties for your subject really comes down to what you feel good about putting your name behind and calling a comp. Um, if you feel it's as similar as a, a, a property as you can possibly find uh, and you've really done your homework on the area as well as the, the property you're pricing, then the search criteria you ultimately choose is up to you. When you don't return enough matches, I've done a lot of searching. We use Populate Form. We got more specific with Red Bats and Location. We uh, chose, you know, six months worth of data instead of a year's worth of market activity. We also chose some statuses. Um, you can take every step I've just taken and come up with zero or one if you're lucky. Now, I only have one piece of advice when that happens. And that is to broaden something up about your search. When you're not returning enough results, something about your search is too narrow and you're going to have to expand it. Now, ideally, you would be able to have a very specific, very narrow search. 
because ultimately the more similar the properties are to your subject that you compare it to the better but that's in a perfect world sometimes we're just not going to find very similar properties so when you cannot find properties as similar as you would prefer and you need to broaden something up about your search my only recommendation is that you choose something that is not a standout feature of your subject property for instance this property was built in the early 70s. If I didn't return enough matches, I could probably expand your built a little bit and comfortably end up with uh, some more possible matches without throwing off um, my search in terms of, of staying as similar to the subject as possible. If I were pricing a property built in 2018, I probably would not choose your built as the piece of criteria to loosen up because that's a new property and the fact that it is a new property is a standout feature. So when you have to get more flexible with a bit of criteria than you might prefer, choose something that's not a standout feature of the property you're pricing. With that, let's view our results and I will give you your third code word. It is dentist. Your third code word is dentist. It's recommended that you see the dentist uh, about once every six months. If you didn't catch code word number two, that's because I put the code word on the screen um, and I did not say, say it aloud. So remember to be watching and listening for those. Okay, I have five search results that I'm seeing here and it's my job to figure out which of these are the properties I'd like to call comparables and actually compare to my subject to come up with a price. It could be all of them, it could be none of them if, if you're unlucky. It's probably going to work out that some of these listings are better matches to my subject property than others. So I do think it's worth taking the time to get to know them a little bit. The best way to do this in the MLS is through the agent full report. The agent full report is where the MLS displays every fact we know about the listing. It's going to be available in the agent full report. Now, you can actually see the agent full report from the CMA report, which is the next step. So I think I'll show you how to do that. Let's open up the CMA report. By the way, it does remember that I previously used populate form. It's asking if I would like to go ahead and do that again on this step. I did create my search based off of the last MLS number assigned to my subject property, 10,057 Marble Street. I'm going to go ahead and use that feature again, but remember we won't use populate if the most recent MLS number is not representative of the property today. In fact, the only difference is that your subject property details would be blank and you would just have to fill those out by hand. It only takes a couple of seconds. It's really not a, a big deal. Now, for those of you that have used the CMA report before, possibly even many times, this new display is different. We have made some changes. However, there's really only one substantive change. There's only one major difference here. And that is we are no longer defaulting to a set of adjustment factors. Now, whether you are new to CMAs or you've done a million of them, adjustments are of course the process by which we account for the differences between our chosen comps, which appear in gray, and the property we're actually pricing. We wish we could find properties identical to the subject, but we probably will not be able to. So we make adjustments in order to help account for the differences. So for those of you that used the CMA report in the past and you're wondering what happened, the main difference is that we are just no longer defaulting to a set of adjustment factors. You can still technically bring them in from this adjustments dropdown. They're labeled as the unverified archived values. I recommend creating your own set of adjustments to use as a springboard. You may even have a few of these sets of adjustments. You'll see I have one here that I've called my adjustments because the truth is there is no set of adjustments that's going to represent everything you're going to come across. Now, whether you are seeing this for the very first time or you're an agent who's used the CMA report many times in the past, 
it is worth taking a little tour of how this page functions because it's quite simple, but there is a lot going on. So let's break it down nice and easy. First of all, your subject property is in the blue column. Okay, and the fact that this property has four bedrooms and one full bath and one three fourth bath and so on, this is filled out already because we use populate. Remember how this appeared when we opened the CMA report. You could just as easily type this information in by hand. Okay, you don't have to use populate. Now our comps or our uh, search results as they are right now because we haven't yet chosen uh, which of these we'd like to use as comps. These are in the gray columns. And in order to learn more about them and choose which ones you'd like to have as comps and which you would not, all you have to do is click on the MLS number of one of these listings. This is the agent full report, but it's in a pop-up window. I can get to know the listing. And if I decide not to include it as a comp, I can simply hit remove. That's going to remove it from uh, my list of, of comps here that are in gray. So subject in blue, comps in gray, and then the CMA report is going to allow me to make adjustments for how these properties are different from the property I'm pricing. So bedrooms is a really good example if we want to break this down nice and easy. My subject property has four bedrooms. Uh, comp number one and comp number two, these also have four bedrooms. So as far as number of bedrooms are concerned, this is a match to our subject and we can just move on to the next detail, which is full baths. My third comp, however, this property only has three bedrooms. Now it did sell for $344.50. Sorry for the scrolling, I'm sure it's getting um, somewhat dizzying. That was an accident. It did sell for $344.50. The question is, what might it have sold for if it had four bedrooms, the way my subject property has four bedrooms? So the system allows me to make an adjustment to account for the fact that this property has a different number of bedrooms than the subject. Now, right now, we're using the unverified archive values, but you could just as easily create an adjustment right here. This is also a great place to add an adjustment for something uh, a little more unusual than, you know, beds, baths, and square footage, like solar panels, or a mother-in-law apartment, or uh, the 10 car garage, or whatever else the, uh, the, the case may be. Um, so you can add adjustments there. We're currently adjusting for bedrooms, and we're adjusting at this rate. Now we're pricing a four bedroom property today. And this might be okay in the case of a, a four bedroom home. We're making a small adjustment because we're, we're just adjusting for the difference between a three bedroom property and a four bedroom property. But what if we were pricing a two bedroom condo and some of our comps only had one bedroom? We would probably need to change this number to something larger. Now watch what happens if I simply double it. Just watch what happens as I change this number. Our comp that has one fewer bedroom than the subject is still adjusting for the fact that it has one less bedroom than the subject property does. But it's now adjusting at the new rate. So this was always um, uh, uh, available to you even if you use the CMA report in the past, you could always change this number uh, as you went along, okay? So you can still change that. But more importantly, my four bedroom comps, the comps that have the same number of bedrooms as my subject property, these do not adjust at all. So even if you put some insane number in here, okay, uh, my four bedroom comps don't adjust whatsoever. And that's because, uh, these properties have the exact same number of bedrooms as the subject. So my point is, the closer your comps are to your subject property, the less these adjustments will be needed. Okay, in fact, if all of our comps had four bedrooms, it looks like only two don't. If all of our comps had four bedrooms, we wouldn't even have to adjust for bedrooms at all. They all match perfectly in that way. 
we could simply remove the line item and move on. So I will be giving you some resources in just a moment that are going to help you to come up with these adjustment values uh, when you're doing your own CMAs. But I'd like to finish our little tour of this page first. So you've got your subject in blue, your comps in gray, then you can make adjustments for how those pro these properties are different from your subject. Once you've made your adjustments, the adjusted values appear at the bottom of the column, and then they get averaged together under your subject range. Now, we ended up with comps that were all in sold status, so we didn't end up with a good example of what happens when you choose comps across multiple statuses, but the subject range is the results of your CMA. This is the answer to the work you've been doing. And if you did choose comps in more than one status, you would see those statuses separated here. So this is what I meant when I said, if you include multiple statuses in your CMA search, the CMA report will separate those statuses for you. We would actually see the adjusted value of our under contract comps averaged together and displayed in the under contract section then you would have sold, then you would have your total, which is all of your comps regardless of their status. These of course are the same because all of our comps are, are sold status in this case. Now I'd like to give you those resources I, I briefly talked about. First of all, use the MLS. The MLS already has a tremendous amount of data about the markets in which you are working. So it is absolutely worth taking a little bit of time to get to know more about the markets you're working in. All of our statistics tools begin with a search. So you're not restricted to just learning about the statistics of Utah or of the county that you're in. You can search the neighborhood you're working in and you can learn the statistics of that area. Um, one of my favorites for CMAs is the sales per month report. It's going to give you the ability to uh, see the latest sales information on a monthly basis and like all of our statistics tools, if we use new tabs really quickly here and we open the sales per month report, it's going to begin with a search. So you can search for the same neighborhood in which you're doing a CMA or the same property type uh, or the same style or the same number of bedrooms and you can get to know the statistics um, for those properties and for that market. The NAR has a tremendous amount of resources available to you. We have a few of them linked actually in the MLS Support Center. So under the help section of the MLS, if you select Support Center, this is going to take you to our collection of articles and videos. Under the CMA section, there's an article called Using the CMA Report, a terrific companion to this class, by the way. Um, so in this particular article, about halfway down the page, there are there's a whole section called need help making adjustments and it links to two different NAR, that's National Association of Realtors resources. The first being my favorite of all the resources I'm going to give you today, it's called the Remodeling Impact Report. One more time, Remodeling Impact Report, you can get to it through our Support Center article, but you could also simply Google it um, or even go directly to the NAR's website and search for it there. The Remodeling Impact Report is going to show you what certain property features are worth. And of course, that's the big question when you're making adjustments during the CMA. What is that extra bedroom worth? What is the brand new roof worth? And so on. So if you were to go to the NAR's Remodeling Impact Report, they would show you that nationwide, um, based on all the data they've collected, Sellers get something like 50% of what they spent on that new roof when they sell. Or that new roof brings 107% of what they spent on that roof when they sell. Or it brings 0.23% of the cost of the new roof to the sale. It completely depends on the feature, of course. But that's the beauty of the remodeling impact report is they help us understand what those features are actually worth. Then you have the Pricing Strategy Advisor. This is actually a designation course that the NAR provides. And that course is going to help you hone your skills when it comes to pricing. I can't recommend it enough. 
There are a lot of different ways to take it, including um, taking it online. So I do recommend checking that resource out as well. And because it's a designation course, yes, it does cost a little bit of money, uh, but you do get the sort of ongoing support and materials from that designation like you would expect. You also get the ability to put those letters after your name on your business cards and so on. So check that out as well. Finally, there is a local Facebook group called Ask the Appraiser. It's called Ask the Appraiser. There are a few different groups on Facebook, but if you search for it, you're just looking for the one that's based in Salt Lake. It is full of realtors and appraisers from across the Wasatch Front having conversations about exactly these topics. So one more time, it's called Ask the Appraiser. I'm not an agent, so I myself haven't vetted the group, but the only reason I even know about it is because agents bring it up and recommend it to other agents when it's teaching. So it does come recommended from other students, which is why I uh, talk about it here. So I hope you'll check out some of those resources. Remember, we should all have a set of adjustment factors to serve as our own springboard, something that more accurately reflects the markets or the kinds of properties we're working with. And we can, of course, then add those one-off factors we might need to adjust for something a little unusual that maybe the subject property has, or maybe it doesn't have it, but a lot of the comps do, or one of the comps does, and we'll need to adjust for that. Okay, so one more time, the CMA report has our subject in blue, our comps in gray, and they're all broken down to their most basic specs. Then they get compared one for one, like for like, and adjusted where they are different. This helps us to build a little bit of a more complete picture about what these properties might have sold for if they were just a little bit more like the subject property. Then that adjusted value, those get averaged together under subject range, which is the result of your CMA. Now, don't forget to save your CMA. These, this process can take you some time. I know some people that do really robust CMAs and they do them very quickly. I know some people that are typically doing more basic CMAs because uh, they're really just giving people some information um, before they really get serious about getting into the market. No matter how complex your CMA is, it's a great idea to save it. You don't want to lose the work that you've done. Saved CMAs can be opened anytime from the CMA tab. Now you need to figure out how you would like to convey what you've learned and the information you've found to the client. There is an MLS option, it's called Create CMA Packet, it's really basic. There's nine pages to choose from. If you wanna see what a page looks like, you can simply click on the title. To include the page in your report, you can select the checkbox to include that particular page and then you can print or email this report as a PDF. It's very simple, like I said. The better option, in my opinion, is Cloud CMA. Now, I talked about this at the beginning of class, and it's, it's worth repeating. Cloud CMA is now included in your MLS membership. It's part of what you are already paying for, so it's a really good idea to at least check it out. Um, that's why we partnered with them. Cloud CMA does a really good job of helping you create your CMA presentation. So if I open Cloud CMA from the MLS reports dropdown, here are the listings I've chosen as comps. I'm going to go ahead and select to create a CMA report. And not only is it going to take me to Cloud CMA, but it's going to log me in, which of course is going to save me a lot of time and effort. Let's try this one more time. For some reason it didn't want to pull correctly. There we go. So not only does it take me to Cloud, but it also logs me in. That way I don't have to remember another password. It also gets me started on step one of a cloud CMA. Here are the MLS numbers of the listings I chose as comparables, and um, we're getting started on step one. This brings me to our final poll. I'm curious whether you knew cloud CMA is included in your membership. Is this something you were already aware of? Uh, is it something you've already taken advantage of? Have you used cloud CMA? What's your relationship to Cloud? To you? Every yeah. time? Mm -hmm. Really? I have like 
So I can already see the majority of you didn't know about cloud CMA. That is totally fine. Um, we do our best to get the word out, but um, I'm glad you're in class because now you know. Okay, let's go ahead and close the poll. Now, I'm on step one. I've technically already done steps one and two inside the MLS system, but Cloud CMA is designed to do a CMA from start to finish if that's what you'd like to do. Because we already did the work of searching for MLS listings through the MLS, I'm just going to do some easy, quick, fast labeling of my CMA report. So I've entered the name of my client. I'm now putting in the address of the subject property. Watch what happens when I choose the match from the dropdown. It actually brings in, uh, bring in, oh my goodness, brought in some tax records, but it did not bring in the basement square footage. It didn't bring the bathroom uh, that's in the basement. So watch for that. Uh, Tax records are very particular as far as separating above grade and below grade square footage and features. So it will frequently leave out that information and you'll want to uh, trim that up and, and, and fix it for your presentation. Now, because I already searched the MLS for the listings I wanted to use as comps, they are listed here for me, but I could use Cloud CME's search option. They themselves have called it quick and dirty it's literally just a bunch of listings that are near the property you're pricing. So if you use Cloud CMA's option, you would have to do quite a bit of digging through the search results to try to find good comps. So no matter how you complete your CMA, I recommend at least doing the search in the MLS, and then you can move over to Cloud CMA for some of these other steps. I just got a question about the code words, so why don't I give you your final one, which is turtle. The last code word is turtle, like sea turtle or snapping turtle. And you will actually submit those via survey. So there will be a survey when you leave the class. If you reach your 54 minutes and you need to get going, you don't have to stay for me to end the course. You can actually leave and that survey is going to launch automatically. Don't recommend you leave. I have a few other things I'd like to show you, but uh, you certainly could do that. Otherwise, when I end the class, you'll get the survey asking for your photos. So excellent question. Um, everyone should be able to submit them pretty easily. Now, here we are looking at the uh, step two. This is where we would do the work that we already completed in the MLS CMA report. But if we simply use the MLS to do a search and then brought our search results over to Cloud CMA, we could use this step to get to know the listings, deselect any you didn't want to use as comps, and make adjustments to any that, you know, for the differences between this property and the property um, you're pricing. We already did this work, so all I have to do on this step is actually just enter a price that I want to recommend to the client. This will be based on what I learned in the MLS system. And you can put in a price or even a price range. I really like the fact that you can put in a price range to recommend to the client. Um, that makes it a little more palatable. They feel a little less like they've been backed into a corner and that you know, you're helping them to be flexible. Now, this is where you build that really nice report. Your theme is going to be the color scheme. So of course, choose a theme that corresponds to your own brand, whether it's your brokerage or your team or what have you. Then you'll choose a layout. How do you want the comps to be displayed? There's six different options to choose from. Some would result in a lot of pages with a lot of detail. Some would result in you know a couple pages max, that kind of thing. You can also choose your font to correspond to your brand. Now to see what these pages look like, the pages in the middle are the ones currently included in your report. To see what they look like, you can click on the name of it. If you decide you don't want to include that page, you can deselect it, but you can bring pages back in anytime under the standard section. You can rearrange the order the pages fall in. And ultimately, once you've built a really nice report that you like and you feel good about, save it as a template. That's just going to save you the hassle of having to build this same report for a different client 
uh, with a different property. If you save it as a template, you'll be able to bring in the basic components of the report you built today, and it will just save you that much time. By the way, you might have noticed that the title page had a photo of the agent and the agent's name and brokerage name. Um, you can also upload your logo, but you'll have to do all of that under the little icon in the upper right hand corner under account settings. So make sure when you go to Cloud CMA that you upload your photo, your best contact information, and your logo. Now, the CMA is currently publishing. If we go back to the CMA section, we'll see all of the reports we've made in the past, including the one we just created that's still publishing. But we ended up with three separate versions of this same CMA report. Three ways to share this information with the client. We have a PDF version. This is how Cloud CMA made their name. It's what they're known for. It is the paper version you can print out and give your client that really nice uh, experience. The live version is like a highly interactive slideshow. I can draw on it to call attention to something for my client. I can remove prompts on the fly. There's a lot we can do with the live presentation. And finally, there is a slideshow. Now the slideshow is made specifically to look good on your tablet. So if you take your tablet to your listing presentation, you sit down with the client with the presentation you created, and you give them this digital experience. And we made all three of these different reports through the same simple four steps we did in Cloud CMA. So I hope you'll check out Cloud CMA. I hope you will start using it. There are some terrific uh, resources available to you there. With that, I would like to get to the questions I've received during class that I haven't yet been able to answer. I'd also like to invite you to send in your papers. The survey is definitely the easiest way. And like I said, if you don't want to take the questions, you can leave the class and you'll still get that survey. You could also email them to train them if you don't really take that. So, uh, let's see. This is a good question. With pricing being so crazy, would you really want to suggest a list price of the house? Uh, let's see. Of the house, I'm sorry. Let's see. Sold prices are a lot more. So, what this commenter is getting at is the fact that the sales prices are coming in higher, typically speaking, than list prices. Um, and it is getting more crazy. That's very well said. Um, I would remind you that when you make your comparisons in the CMA report, if your comps are sold status comp, the price that will be used to make your adjustments and actually come up with a price will be the sold price of the property. Um, if you used other statuses, that would be comparing a list price uh, in order to come up with a, a, a list price. So when you use sold status comps, you're actually starting with the actual sales price of those listings. So, I would say if you're concerned about the fact that um, most properties are selling so much higher than what they're listed at, I would stick with sold comps in that case. Sometimes you just simply don't have that luxury because of course it's too difficult to find comparables. I also have a question um, just stating that they're currently struggling with a CMA and what's their best